Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nali. So today what we're going to talk about is how to write and balance chemical equations. So first off, we'll just discuss, discuss what a chemical equation is. A chemical equation is basically a type of equation that describes what you need to have a chemical reaction happen. And a chemical reaction, as you know, is a process in which one or more substances, which we're going to call reactants, are changed into other substances, which we're going to call products. So what I would want to talk about now is uh, the components of a chemical equation. So here, for example, you have uh, a reaction, a chemical reaction, written in the form of an equation. So you have CH4 methane reacting with oxygen, O2 forming CO2 and H2O. So what we want to talk about is just some of the names that we would associate with the species as well as how to write a chemical equation correctly. Okay, so look at this reaction right here. The reactant molecules are the molecules that are written on the left side of this arrow. So these are your reactants. And then of course the molecules that are made from those reactants are the ones written on the right side and those are called the uh, products. The other thing that's important about a chemical equation is the physical state of matter that you have to write in. So in this case you can note, you, I hope you notice here that each one of these uh, species, whether the reactant or the product, has letters written next to them. Those represent the physical state of each of those substances in this particular reaction. And there are four different ones that we can have as far as symbols are concerned. The physical states themselves are three, which is S for solid, L for liquid, and G for gas. And then later on you'll see that there also is the symbol AQ for aqueous reaction. These refer to species that have been dissolved in water, so it's a little bit different. It's not necessarily a physical state, but it's basically a system or a mixture of two components. And we'll talk more about this in the next topic when we discuss aqueous reactions. One of the most important things about a chemical equation is that it has to be balanced. So what's that mean? That just means that you have to have the same number of atoms on the left and type of atoms, same number of atoms and their types, as well as on the right side, on the product side. The reason for this is from the law of conservation of mass. Remember that the masses of uh, reactants and products have to equal each other. So as a result, that translates to having the same number of atoms and the same type of atoms on both sides of the equation. Here's an example of this reaction again that we talked about just now. Combustion reaction for methane which is CH4 plus O2 plus CO, uh, going to CO2 and H2O. So one of the things that we have to do with this equation is we have to balance it. We know it's not balanced right now because the number of atoms that are given there are not the same. So for example here if I were to write down on each one of them the number of atoms that I have and the type. So I have carbon, I have hydrogen, and I have oxygen. And I just write it for both sides of the equation. I can see that for a carbon I have only one. So I have one carbon atom. For hydrogen I have four for the reactant side. And for oxygen I have two. And then for the product side I can see that my carbon is still one. My hydrogen is two and my oxygen is 3. So these numbers are not equal to each other for all the different atoms so we have to balance them by uh, multiplying each of these formula with the correct whole number um, that we can put in front of the formula. Okay. So then what, would, what do we have to do? We just have to kind of find out uh, by trial and error really what's, uh, what would balance this uh, reaction equation. Okay. So if you notice here there's four hydrogen and there's only two hydrogen on this side so one of the things you can do is just multiply the water here by two thereby now giving you four hydrogen molecules 
Okay, so that fixes that problem. Now, of course, you have a different number of oxygen as a result of that multiplication because this number multiplies across the entire formula. So then now, instead of having three oxygen, you have two oxygen for here, and you have one oxygen, but there's two water here, so you have two oxygens from the two waters. So as a result, you have a total of four. If you have a total of four, you notice that the carbon is already equal to each other, so that's fine. The hydrogen is also equal to each other, but then this one is not equal. In order to make it equal, I have to multiply this by two. So you look up here and you say there is oxygen two already, so I just need to multiply that by two. Now I have four oxygens, and now everything is equal to each other. So then uh, the equation now is balanced. So I hope you can see this is really just a three-dimensional representation of the same reaction that we just did in the previous slide for the combustion of methane. And you can see now that you have uh, CH4 and then you have two oxygens, right? That's what we did for the balancing. And then you have carbon dioxide, which is this molecule right here. Then we have two water. If you count the number of atoms, you can see that they all add up correctly. For example, the black one is carbon atom. Uh, so you need, notice there's one black uh, sphere here, which is the carbon atom, and you notice that all of here also you see just one black sphere, which is one carbon atom. So the carbons are balanced. You can check this out with the uh, nitrogen, for example. You, I mean, the oxygen, you can see that there's one, two, three, four oxygen totals, and you can see that on the right side, if you add all of the oxygen atoms together, you also get four. One, two, three, four. The oxygen are the red colored ones. And you should look and make sure the hydrogen also has the same number of atoms. Just going back to the equation that we balanced earlier, the numbers that we put in here, two for oxygen and uh, two for water, those are what we call stoichiometric coefficient. Okay, So they're called stoichiometric coefficient. And sometimes uh, other textbooks, certain textbooks would just call them coefficients, but it means it's the number that you use to multiply the entire formula you have in the equation. So for the ones where you don't put any number, then it's just one, right? But there is an understanding that if you don't put any number in front of it, that means that you're multiplying by one. Okay, this slide is actually quite important because it tells you the meaning of a balance equation. So I call this how to read a balance equation. This was the equation that we had earlier. Um, that we just balance with these stoichiometric coefficients, right? So how do you read this equation? What is it, what is it telling you? There are several ways you can read this. One is from a, an atomic scale perspective. What this is telling you is that there's one molecule of methane, uh, which is going to react with two molecules of oxygen to produce one molecule of carbon dioxide and two molecules of water. And all of these are in the gas state. Uh, you can remember that there's a relationship between molecule and moles, though those are related by Avogadro's numbers. So we can also say, equivalently, one mole of CH4 reacts with two moles of oxygen to produce one mole of CO2 and two moles of water. Because they're related by Avogadro's number, one mole, remember, is just this many molecules. So you can also say 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CH4 reacts with 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If you do that in a calculator, this is the number that you should get, 1.2 times 10 to the 24th molecules of oxygen. So that reaction produced 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of carbon dioxide and 1.2 times 10 to the 24 molecules of H2O. Lastly, remember that moles can be related to mass. So one mole of CH4 is just 16 grams of CH4. You can do this calculation by using the molar mass. Okay, so you should prove this to yourself. And then two moles of oxygen should be 64 grams of oxygen. And then converting one mole of CO2 to grams, you should get 44 grams of CO2. And converting two moles of water, you should get 36 grams of water. Now notice, if you add up both numbers for reactants and products, 16 plus 64 is equal to 80 grams of reactants, and 44 plus 36 is also 80 grams of products. So in other words, here this shows the conservation of mass law that we talked about in 
prior chapters uh, that mass is conserved, both sides are 80 grams. So this slide shows you a general approach you should use in balancing equation. First off, it's a really a trial and error type process, but you can make it a little bit more systematic, a little simpler, if you start balancing elements that are found only in one compound. And then one thing that's always important to keep in mind with balancing is you always want to check your final equation because all the atom types should balance, should have the same number. If you don't have that, then you need to redo your balancing. I'm going to work through a quick example to show you how to balance the following equation. Okay? Okay, so let's look at this equation again. Remember that this was just the equation that I just showed in the sl on the slide earlier. It was um, an equation where you have MnO2 reacting with HCl to produce those three products. Now, one of the things you want to do first is just try to balance it based on what, what is now unbalanced. So if you look at this equation, you see that the manganese is fine. There's one on both sides. The oxygen is not, right? You have, one, you have two oxygens on one side and you have uh, one oxygen on the product side. So what you need to do is multiply this by two. And that's what I mean earlier when you want to try to find elements that exist only in one compound. Oxygen only exists in M MnO2 on the reactant side and only exists in water on the product side. So multiplying by two solves that problem. So now you have your two oxygen. So your oxygen is balanced now. Now you can look at other ones. Um, H2, once you multiply it by two, then you have four hydrogens on the right side, which means that now you need to multiply this number by four, this formula by four to get four hydrogens on the left side as well. And then you're left with the chlorine. Chlorine is the element that you would not want to start balancing with because it might be difficult to work with those. The reason is because chlorine is present in two uh, compounds. So you always want to try elements that are only present in one compound like the oxygen earlier or the hydrogen. But basically, if you look at chlorine at this point, I have four chlorine on the reactant side. And if you have it here, you have two chlorines. Uh, and then you also have two chlorines from this one. So in total, you have four chlorine. So in other words, all your elements are balanced. You're good to go in this point. Okay.